Hi and welcome! In this video we're going to learn about enums, and then I will give you a few hints on how to create Battleship game. Let's start with enums. Enums or enumerations are user-defined data type. Here's the syntax for declaring enums. Take a look at this little program. It defines an enum called colors. Then I define a variable called background color and initialize it to red. To access elements of the enum, use the enum name dot and the name of the element. Enums have the following properties. Minimum returns the smallest value, maximum returns the largest value, and size of returns the storage size of the enumeration. Enums are default initialized. It starts from the first element and initializes it to zero by default. The next element is one, the one after that is two, and so on. If need be, you can initialize elements manually. For example, if I initialize the first element to 5, the next element is 6, and the element after that is 7, and so on. It is also possible to create an enum without a name. In this case, it's called an anonymous enum, and their elements are visible to everyone. No need to use enum name to access its elements. They do not have minimum, maximum, and size of properties mentioned above. Alright, that's it about enums. Let's move on to Battleship game. In our game, the player will play against the computer. Firstly, to create a game, we will need three two-dimensional arrays. These arrays will represent our game boards. One two-dimensional array will hold our ship positions data. The second one will hold our enemy's ship positions data. And the third one is the hidden territory that will be displayed to the screen for the player to guess enemy's ship positions. Number 0 will represent an empty space, 1 will represent a ship, and letter X will represent a ship that has been destroyed. Secondly, we need to somehow track our game states. We will have three game states, play, help, and exit. When our game states equals to exit, our game quits. When it is equal to help, we display some information on how to play the game, and when it is equal to play, we proceed to the gameplay. Thirdly, we need to somehow track whose turn is it to play. We could use a boolean or enum data type, it's all up to you. And finally, both play and help game states will have similar code structure. Both game states will print something to the screen, receive user input and do some logic. Alright, that's it for today. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. In the next video, we will start making the game itself. However, I recommend you to use the hints given in this video and try to create the game yourself. Have a nice day!